Hey, welcome back. Today, uh, we're going to answer that age-old question. If an event comic happens, and nobody really seems to care what's happening, and nothing really eventful happens inside the comic itself, is that truly an event? I think you know that I'm talking about Event Leviathan, and we're going to talk about issue number four today. And, and enough happened, or at least got talked about, that uh, I've developed a theory. It seems totally out of left field, but hey, let's put on our detective hats and uh, get to the bottom of this one, shall we, gang? Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. Today we're going to talk about Event Leviathan, issue number four. Now, my last review of issue number three was a little less than enthusiastic. Not much happened in the series so far. We're already, we're halfway through it. And I said, something better happen in issue number four, or you're going to really start hemorrhaging uh, readers. I'm reading this thing no matter what, but uh, let's take a look. You know what? Enough talk. I say we go straight to the Million Dollar Comics cam, right? Let's take a look at Event Leviathan number four by Brian Michael Bendis with art by Alex Maleev. Let's start with the art. Maleev is an incredible comics artist. Not everybody likes this style. Not everybody thinks it's suitable um, for superhero comics or certainly for a superhero event comic. But man, look at this stuff. This is beautiful. It's, I mean, it's moody. It's evocative. It's really like well-referenced. If he's not using photo reference um, for every frame, he's at least, you know, uh, using it a lot for reference, I guess. Anyway, in our last issue, we left on a cliffhanger as uh, Amanda Waller gets confronted to be kidnapped by uh, Leviathan and uh, Superman comes to her rescue, right? And what happens? Well, we don't get to see it per se. What we get is the aftermath. Superman failed. Damien is kind of ragging on him and Green Arrow is kind of ragging on him. But... Uh, he, he goes ahead and tells us what happens instead. So basically, he showed up. He's listening with his super listening powers, right? Superman has super hearing. So he's listening apparently to the entire world for certain phrases, uh, you know, chatter about Leviathan. And because, but because the whole world, I guess, is talking about Leviathan, it's sort of like there's too much noise to signal. So... That's almost like a smoke screen, so he hasn't been able to zero in. But for whatever reason, he was listening really hard to Cuba, and he heard Amanda Waller. Okay, key moment. Superman's going to go in there, and then <laughs> starts working at super speed. I mean, he says it here, I, I jump into super speed, which I guess means like his senses, suddenly everything's happening very slow. And he's got time. He's going to use his x-ray vision. He's like, oh, Leviathan, who is this guy or gal? Let's figure it out. I'm looking, I'm looking. It says, uh, I was super speed, ready for whatever happened next. I thought if I could focus my x-ray vision and or my telescopic vision into something that would help me see through the Leviathan technology. Didn't work. Wow, Leviathan must be super high tech. If you can block Superman's x-ray vision, what kind of crazy astro tech is that? Oh, wait. Maybe they just have a coat of lead paint, right? Lead blocks Superman's x-ray vision. You don't need to have super molecular, uh, algorithmically designed fear masks to do that. You need, like, some lead. Okay, it's one of the most common elements in the universe, apparently. But let's keep going. So, Superman, something happens, right? Typical Bendis moment, we're dropped... After the fact, we're getting it through Superman's memory. It's uh, in media res, the story starts, right? Like in the middle of things. All of Bendis' comics are in media res. Bendis writes middles. It's all middle, right? That's why we have nothing's happened really yet. It's sort of like just a messiness unfolding. Now, the problem here is that... Uh, it, so his, his x-ray vision didn't work. Okay whatever the reasoning, and suddenly Leviathan basically hits him with his big whammy, which has been this thing, this blue thing, this blue energy that that does something, right? According to Superman, by the way, beautiful panel by Maleev, 
right? Really interesting. We can see, and I read an interview with Bendis where he says he described what this should seem like to Superman. So he's going in a circle. He's going in, is it a tunnel? Is it a, he, what, what does he say? He says, he says, I had already surmised uh, that it wasn't so much a destructive force as maybe some sort of temporal force, either pushing matter through time or space or both. So super speed, as the Levian energy matrix enveloped around me, I pushed myself into super speed to get to Amanda and Leviathan. I was going to engage it. Immediately, I felt the force push back. It was reacting to me as fast, faster than me. I pushed myself. It pushed back more. I pushed as fast as I could without losing my ability to put everything back together again. I pushed. It didn't work. Okay. So what happened? A, a crazy, amazing, and te temporal force. He got teleported. Okay, he got sucked into a tube and teleported. Let's save this for our theory moment. Okay, let's keep going. Um, next, we get to see Manhunter and some uh, and and the uh, the detective gang. Right, we've got all the great detectives are. A lot of the great detectives of the DC universe together trying to solve this, right? We've got Vic Sage, the question, or or is it? We've got Plastic Man, we've got uh, Damian Wayne, we've got Green Lantern or Green Arrow rather, uh, and we've got um, Manhunter, who sort of got sucked into this thing seemingly out of nowhere. Now, Manhunter is a uh, is there a character more made for Brian Bendis, right? She's such a like she's a mother, she's a reluctant superhero, she's got these crazy roots in the DC universe. This is obviously somebody that Bendis is interested in, but occasionally he'll pull this thing like he did with Jessica Jones back in the Marvel day. Not Jessica Jones, but Spider-Woman, right? Um Jessica Drew where Everyone, Bendis had always meant to bring her back, brought her in, and she ended up being like a scroll in disguise in the beginning, and then brought the character back. That could be what's happening here. This She could be a sleeper agent. They sort of think and are talking about her being a sleeper, like her, just like maybe some of these other people that survived, like uh, Steve Trevor and, and, and the Red Hood and blah, blah, blah. All these other people they've been suspecting. And they basically go, you know what? I think Leviathan's smart enough that he's, he or she or they have been sort of planting these, leaving these people behind just to make us suspicious, make us waste our time um, figuring this out when the real stuff is, is, is you know, they're playing three-dimensional chess and we're, they're three levels above us. And this is where uh, Green Arrow says, he decides, you know, what exactly are we trying to put together? You know why? This isn't about you at all. You know what it is? It's a gimme gummit. Yeah, a gimme gummit. G I M M E G U M A T. I don't know. I didn't know what that was. I still don't know what it is because I went to Google it and there is exactly one result for the phrase gimme gummit, right? In quotes. And that is somebody reviewing Event Leviathan number four and wondering what the hell gimme gummit is. So. Looking at this and trying to figure it out, I started looking at gummit, and gummit is like a Romanian word that means gummy bear or something like. It doesn't I? Is this a clue? Is Bendis dropping anagrams? I'm doing anagrams. Doing, and then I th thought, what if it's a typo? Because <coughs> they've got this grouping of potential people that are, seem obvious potential candidates. Like they're gimmies, and maybe this is the gamut of gimmies. Maybe this is the gimme gamut. Am I spending too much time on this one little typo? Maybe I am, but dude, it sent me down a rabbit hole. So, a meaningless one in the end, right? So anyway, we move on, and we get to see a moment here uh, at Wayne Manor, and we see a character known as the Silencer, a kind of more recent DC character who I, I have not read any of the comics, but I looked at, did a little bit of research, and she's got a superpower that lets her silence things, right? She can suck the sound out of everything. I think she's going to be on one of the TV shows or Birds of Prey or something like that where, you know, she's a perfect foil against somebody like Black Canary with sonic powers or whatever. Um, also, is a, a great assassin, obviously, because she can, you know, create complete silence and whatever, do her thing. So here she is. She's, like, camped out at Wayne Manor with a, with a, with a sniper rifle. 
and she sees Lois Lane leaving and, 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 and sort of speculates and sees Superman leaving and she's talking to somebody. It's like, it, it's heavily implied she's talking to Event Leviathan, if not outright stated. Like, it's, she's part of Leviathan, right? And she was, when I did some research, she was part of Talia al Ghul's organization, so it really does make sense for her to be already ensconced in Leviathan. But we'll come back to her in a second in my theory section. So let's finish out what happens here in the issue. Um, more talk. More, uh, uh, finally, Batgirl contacts them. Batgirl was approached by Leviathan to join, and that was the last we had heard of her. Now um, she's she's working like within Leviathan. She's there, and she's sending... Um, she sent this message. She's like, something is about to happen tomorrow. I've been going radio silent, but I have to like get this out here. You have to know. And they start asking questions. Who is Leviathan? Who is it? And little Levin. I don't know what that means. Merc. Is that? And something happens, right? And we don't get the answers. We end with Lois Lane leaving and uh, going to another spot and meeting up with what turns out to be her second team of detectives. Spoiler alert. And let's take a look at who this team is. The other, I guess, great detectives of the DC Universe that we haven't seen yet, including, looks to me like uh, Zatanna. Uh, That looks like Harvey Bullock from Batman. Uh, Deathstroke, uh, the Terminator? Uh... Another question? Is this the Ray Mo- Renee Montoya question? Maybe. Who's that? Is that Hellblazer? John Constantine? I think so. And then who the last guy is, I'm not sure. I'm like, who's the backwards E guy? I don't know. And and, and I looked around and it seems like this is elongated, man, which makes perfect sense because he's always been like a detective character in the DC Universe. And so these are like the missing detectives. This is like Lois Lane has been running two games the whole time because she... They've been suspecting their own team of detectives, so it could be somebody on their team, so she's got a whole other team running. This is why Lois Lane is the world's greatest investigative reporter, folks. Not just because she's Superman's girlfriend, I mean wife. It's it's because she's she's you know she's the daughter of Sam Lane, a spy master, who might be Leviathan still, we don't even know. But, you know, so she's playing this other game. She sees things on a, a higher level even than most of the superheroes do. Okay. So that's what happens, or rather, sort of happens, right? Not much happens in these comics. A lot of talk, not a ton of happen. So the unstoppable power of Superman, wow, he sure got stopped, like, immediately, right? So, okay, let's let's talk about this comic, and let's talk about this moment in particular. Okay, so this has been the whole shtick of Leviathan, is that this blue energy happens, and things disappear. At first I thought everybody was killed at all these spy agencies turns out nobody's really been killed they've all been sort of absorbed leading us to believe that maybe there's potentially like somebody who's good or thinks they're good behind the scenes running leviathan i have another theory because what is this this is a this is a teleport tube right but it's a boom tube okay but there's no boom so how could that? But the only thing in comics for a boom tube is, is there, you see the sound boom. That's the telltale sign. You got teleported, and there was a boom in the DC universe. It's a boom tube, right? AKA comes from Apocalypse or maybe New Genesis, like mo- generated by a mother box. So, okay. So, if, but if there's no boom, it's not a boom tube, right? But we've just established in this issue that a character called the Silencer, works for Leviathan. And at this moment where Superman's kidnapped, Leviathan is surrounded by a bunch of henchmen. One of them could easily have been Silencer. Silence in the damn boom, right? So if that's true, if this is a boom tube, then let's go into rank speculation time, okay? If you were going to invade from another planet, like Apocalypse... Wouldn't you want to know the situation on Earth? There's all these superhumans on Earth you know about, but you'd want to know everything. And not only that, there's all these Earth organizations that are looking out for aliens and looking out for extraterrestrial threats, like the, whatever, the DEO and all these other agencies that got taken out. If you were going to try and invade 
earth, wouldn't you take out those organizations or even better, try to absorb them so that you would find out all the info that they have. They have all the knowledge on all these superheroes, right? So that brings up another point about why do we care who Leviathan is, right? Like, this is a universe full of people with masks and hoods and secret identities. So you've got a new villain, Leviathan. Why are we automatically assuming this is somebody we know? I mean, maybe the circumstances dictate that this is somebody with inside knowledge of the intelligence agency, so it must be a friend of a... I don't know. It's hard to say. So my theory, and I floated this online and actually got a tweet out of Bendis on it, uh, because in, in a previous issue, Amanda Waller says, I know that tech. I've seen that tech. I know you. Your mask is algorithmically blah, blah, blah. We talked about that. And you're a con man. So I go, who's a con man with boom tube technology? Glorious Godfrey? And this is a weird one. Maybe that's not the character, but I'm guessing some kind of apocalypse connection some kind of potential war between Earth and Apocalypse that this is going to lead into. Why do I think this? Because that's all that Bendis does. He doesn't have satisfying endings because life doesn't have satisfying endings. Each series of events leads into the next series of events. So my theory is that the event, at the end of Event Leviathan, there better be a reveal of who this is because it's been built up to be such a mystery. But I believe that it will not be resolved. It, it, Leviathan will not be stopped. It this will be the launch of some other type of uh, DC Universe spanning event, maybe written by Bendis, maybe not. Right. So okay, that's it for my theories about Event Leviathan. Look, not a lot of people are reading this. Certainly not as many are, as are reading X Men or, or or watching my X Men videos. So. Um, thanks for watching, right? If you tuned in this long, you're a Bendis fan or you're a Superman fan or you're just a comic book news fan. And it's because of you that we've been growing and growing and are going to soon be able to offer new features and all kinds of new stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Keep watching. Keep hitting like, subscribe, tell your friends, share these links with people, and we will see you next time.